to be given this opportunity. And while I was nervous and overwhelmed when Elena asked me, I thought, I can do this and I need to get this out there. I hope by sharing this with you, I might provide an insight into some warning signs and give support and strength to others. On the 3rd of December 2014, my parents, Ian and Margaret Setchery, were murdered. Our loving, united family, broken in an instant. We became statistics in domestic violence. What is domestic violence? It can be verbal abuse and mental torment. It can be physical, which is assault. It can be harassment. This is threatening behaviour and a private nuisance. It can be stalking, whether it is stalking a family member or an outsider. The different types of relationship violence are physical assault. This involves hitting, slapping, pushing, kicking, pulling hair, choking or threatening to harm someone in any physical way. It can even involve using a weapon or an object to threaten or hurt. Emotional abuse, making the first person feel inferior or unworthy by constantly putting them down or making them feel stupid. It can include emotional blackmail, like threatening to self-harm or commit suicide. Sexual assault, the pressure, pressuring or forcing someone to do sexual things that they don't want to do, manipulating or intimidating someone to even have sex when they don't want to. Financial abuse, when a person demands or takes money off the other person or when a person is guilt-tripped into paying for everything. Cyberbullying, the use of email, text messages, chat rooms or mobile phones to deliberately harass, humiliate, embarrass, torment, threaten or intimidate a person. Cultural and spiritual abuse, when a person shows lack of regard and respect for your cultural and spiritual beliefs and values. Verbal abuse, being put down, name calling, verbally criticised for what you do or say. Belittling. Stalking and intimidation. Constantly following, watching, hanging around your home, school or workplace. Social abuse. Keeping you from your friends, family and other support. The constant checking up and demanding to know where you are and who you are with. Is this okay? No, it's not. Speak up, seek help, support and report. Most of you would be sitting here listening to this, relating it only to partner relationships. Well, it's not. Domestic violence can be siblings, parents, sons and daughters, a friend or your neighbour or even a work colleague. I pointed out to my children in 2014, we are now statistics in domestic violence. They were shocked as we are a very close, supportive family, very loving, but they soon recognised where I was coming from. My brother, over a lot of years, inflicted upon me, my parents mostly, and anyone around him, emotional abuse, financial abuse, cyberbullying, stalking, intimidation, a lot of verbal abuse, and at times physical assault. He had power, and control over all of us. I had seen Mum hurt and in tears. I've seen her with bruises and so tired from the constant verbal abuse and threats. Unfortunately, Mum denied and hid all of this from her friends, family and everyone she associated with. You would see her on a daily basis, smiling, working and doing her day-to-day -day things like nothing was wrong in her life. She would tell me that my brother didn't mean to. He's sorry and he regrets what he has done. She thought it was her fault. Dad had been pushed and shoved and threatened. He endured a lot of verbal abuse almost every day. It broke my heart when he told me he felt like a prisoner in his own home. He was tired and frightened. 
He too was keeping it private. He too thought it was his fault. I was scared too. I was nervous when my brother was around me and I would lock myself in at night. And there were times when he stalked me. A couple of times he struck out at me, but he didn't succeed. Mum was very forgiving. Mum's forgiveness and, and denial was enabling my brother to continue with his power and control. She didn't realise this. She was his mother and wanted to protect him, as any mother would or any partner or friend would do. She honestly believed each time that it wouldn't happen again. And what happened? He killed them. Mum and Dad paid the ultimate price. They lost their lives while protecting the perpetrator, their son. I'm not saying this is how all domestic violence issues will end up. However, I am sending a warning out there to as many people as I can. Don't accept any of this in your life. Don't always accept I'm sorry or I didn't mean to. Take a stand and protect yourself and others when the threats, intimidation, verbal and physical abuse occur. Seek help. Report it to the police. And in saying this, I don't mean just notify the police. You need to make a statement. If the person abusing you has to face court, let them. Don't be afraid of the consequences for them and don't retract from your statement and actions. The law needs to intercept and the law needs to take action. I will openly admit this is where I went wrong. Yes, there were times when I called the police. However, there were times when I didn't. Mum would not allow me to. Now I regret not making more calls to the police. Mum and Dad would never take action. He was their son and they loved him. If Mum and Dad were here tonight, Mum would be embarrassed and possibly a little bit angry with me for speaking out. She would think this is private. Why should she be embarrassed? She did absolutely nothing wrong. This is a question you can ask yourselves whenever you see the slightest sign of domestic violence in either your own family, a friend, a neighbour, a schoolmate or even a work colleague. We need to take a stand and not let this happen to anyone. You need to take a stand and not let this happen to you. It is not okay. There's light at the end of the tunnel and there's positives out of a bad situation. Find your inner strength and you will become stronger and more positive than ever before. Value people's lives with respect. Listen to those around you non-judgmentally. Value opinions. Be willing to compromise. Share responsibilities. Communicate openly and truthfully and accept and take responsibility for yourself. You can only grow and learn from this. From my own experience and the tragedy my family and I have had to deal with, somehow I have managed to find the strength to soldier on and to try and make a small impact and help others. Firstly, I am standing here tonight speaking truthfully in front of you all. It's taken a tremendous amount of courage and strength on my part to do this. I have written to Rosie Batty, a lobbyist for domestic violence, and joined her lobbying to have some laws changed and for intervention to be put in place a lot quicker. I have written to political parties in the hope that a few laws might change. I have contacted radio and television stations and I have, become a very, I have become very passionate about Petir and more involved in this wonderful organisation, raising awareness and smashing the stigma on mental health. My son Brett has formed life, living intentionally for excellence. Life is a company, a positive movement that respects the human endeavours to strive for excellence every day and to tap into your inner self. 
He has also launched a range of t-shirts and donates 100% of the profits to the team. Life Tees is another range of t-shirts and 100% of these profits is donated to Dare to Stare, Souls to Souls and the Snowy Hydro South Cape. These charities were chosen by three Australian Paralympians. We now find strength when giving our time and support to others. We will stand by Mum and Dad's morals to give and not take. Our giving has helped us get through our loss. If I can help one family or even one person not go through what we have gone through and to recognise any of the signs of domestic violence, I feel I have achieved. Please recognise the signs and speak up. Seek help, report to police or to an organisation that can help and don't enable the perpetrator to continue with power and control. Take back the power and control over your own life. Thank you.